Around here, we don't generally unbox anything that's not a Chromebook or maybe a Chrome base or a Chromebox from time to time. But when Google makes a phone, we gotta get our hands on it. And that's the case with this one, the Pixel 5a. So let's hop in the box. So as I said, this is a little bit out of our comfort zone, but it's a Google made phone. So we wanna talk about it. And we have on our website quite a bit. We've talked about the Pixel 5a and a little bit about why it's a tad bit confusing, honestly, because remember back a little over a year, under a year ago, I'm sorry, they announced the Pixel 5 and the 4a 5G. And that was on the heels of the Pixel 4a. Things got real confusing. There was COVID involved. You know, it was a whole thing. And Google almost felt like they were getting out of the flagship game. Well, now we've got the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro coming, and everyone I've talked to is super excited about a flagship level Pixel phone again. I'm excited about it. I'm ready to return back to those roots again. But for now, what we're getting today is the Pixel 5a. And so the question then becomes, where exactly does this phone sit in Pixel lineup right now? And this is, device is only gonna be released in the US and Japan. So it's not trying to take over a bunch of stuff. And it kind of still sits pretty oddly next to the 4A 5G. It's a little bit bigger, 6.3 uh, inches versus the 6.2 in, uh, in the 4A 5G. And it's got water resistance added this time. Uh, you've got really good cameras. It's a Pixel phone. So you've got uh, an actually a wider uh, angle, wide angle camera. So instead of 107 degrees uh, field of view, I believe it goes up to 117 degrees this time around. Uh, but there's just not a lot different going on here. And unboxing it, I'm just gonna be honest. It feels like the 4A 5G. It looks like it. It, it I don't know. There's just not a lot different going on here. You've got uh, two camera notches here, a flash, a fingerprint scanner, again, a 6.32 inch screen, I think is what it is, something like it. it's 6.3 inches roughly, you know, so not that different of a screen. It's got a hole punch camera up top, uh, plastic chassis, uh, colored button here in one color, this almost black. It does have hints of green in it, and Google actually does say it's like a forest green uh, hint that's in here. So if you look hard enough, you can kind of see a greenish tint to this but there's not really a lot going on here. This is a, a very basic Pixel phone. If you look at Pixel phones since the Pixel 4a, basically. So the 4a, the 4a 5G, the Pixel 5, and now the Pixel 5a have all a very specific aesthetic. It kind of gets out of its own way, doesn't do anything flashy, but you know, feels good enough in the hand, has a nice glass front, rounded corners, you know, it, it's not doing a whole lot here, again, and it's not really differentiating itself from the 4A 5G in a whole lot of ways. So let's actually just look in the box real quick. Uh, we've got a SIM tray, or a SIM card tray removal tool, uh, some of the paperwork there. And lo and behold, you still get a charging brick here. It's an 18 watt fast charger. Uh, again, similar to what we've seen on Pixel phones for a little bit. You've got the cable and you've got a USB-A to USB Type-C converter. Again, nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, when it comes down to it, I mean, honestly, when it comes to smartphones, there's not a whole lot of new stuff we're expecting to see in the box. We're not gonna be blown away by whatever's being packaged, especially not in a phone in this price range. $449 is what this will go for in the States. That comes with 128 gigs of internal storage, six gigs of RAM, and the same 765G Snapdragon processor that we've had in other devices prior to this, Pixel 5, Pixel 4a 5G, most notably there. And so it's impossible not to draw these uh, conclusions uh, with the similarities between this and the 4a 5G. Again, they're almost the same size. They're made of the same build materials. They have the same processor inside, same amount of RAM, same amount of storage. Uh, the difference has come down to IP67 rating for this phone. So this one can actually get submerged in water and, and have dust and stuff in it uh, with no problems. Uh, this one again has 5G as well, but it also has a much larger battery capacity inside. And because of that, Google is saying you can get up to 48 hours if you're using their extreme battery saver tool on here. Most people don't wanna do that. It's gonna shut down a lot of your stuff that you would normally want to use. But I would wager that this phone will get pretty good battery life, easily getting you through a day because the 4,680 milliamp hour cell inside here 
should easily power a Pixel phone because, again, they get great battery life anyway, should power any Pixel phone easily through a day. I don't see battery life being any issue here whatsoever. As for the screen, 6.3 inches and plenty bright. Google's actually saying that this uh, particular display will get brighter if you're out in sunlight. So if you were to point it, say, at at certain light and it's bright enough, it actually has a boost that can give you some outdoor brightness, which will be a nice addition. Uh, it's not the brightest display I've seen. I put it up next to my uh, OnePlus 8T and it's a little bit uh, warmer of a display and a little bit dimmer, not too much, uh, but ultimately I think it's gonna be a fine panel. It is OLED, so the, the punchiness of the colors looks really good uh, to my eye right now. And again, you get that near bezel-less display with the hole punch camera up front there. Uh, again, this is all uh, just, it feels like kind of reiterated Google Pixel stuff at this point. Uh, they, they've put together a similar overall aesthetic, a similar overall recipe for success, basically in the affordable phone category here. And I think this phone's gonna do well, uh, especially if it's not put up against some randomly cheaper 4A 5G. Now, if the situation arises where Google chooses to keep this phone and the 4A 5G around, which it doesn't look like they're going to, especially in the US, uh, that could get confusing for consumers, I think, and it would be hard for anyone to say, oh, go buy this over that if, if the 4A 5G is cheaper. Uh, but as it stands right now, I think this phone will stand up as a decent, complement to the Pixel 6 when the Pixel 6 arrives uh, this fall because ultimately that's going to be an expensive flagship phone. But this gives you the Pixel experience on a budget basically. You get plastic externals um, and obviously you're not getting the fastest chipset in the world but the 765G does okay. It gets 5G which is nice uh, and it can play some games as long as you're not trying to crank everything up to the highest settings and from what I can tell just kind of moving around the phone a little bit everything seems pretty snappy and pretty nice. So overall, you're getting the Pixel experience probably for half of what you're gonna end up paying for a Pixel 6 in the fall. Ultimately though, I think what has impressed me most about this phone right now is how much it makes me eager for the Pixel 6. And a mid-range phone should do that. Samsung's kind of figured out you know, the, the, the general uh, idea behind marketing phones this way of having a, an expensive flagship and then having other phones underneath it. I mean, Apple does the same thing with their iPhones. They have, you know, the top dog iPhone, but then they've kind of stepped down as you move down beneath that phone. And there's a reason for that. I can get this pixel experience here and, you know, the, the launcher acts the way it's supposed to and all the extra pixel feature drops are in here and the, the voice recorders here, the the great features in the camera here like night sight and portrait lighting and all that stuff comes along for the ride with this phone because it's a pixel phone. It also gets the latest version of Android. So as soon as Android 12 launches later in the year, this phone's gonna get that. Uh, it comes with the launcher that you expect in a pixel phone. It comes with all the things that make a pixel great, which is mostly just software stuff. And it comes in at a lower price. And because of that, I think this is going to be a fine phone to be around, especially throughout the holidays, because it could go on sale and be even less than 400 bucks outright. You're not getting it on some sort of payment plan or anything. To be able to spend 400 bucks for a phone like this, honestly, is pretty awesome because again, it comes with a lot of great features that you expect in the Pixel line. But for me, for users like me, for people who don't mind spending a little bit more money on a phone, what this phone also does is point to a Pixel 6, something that I think is a better, going to be a better overall experience, something that's going to be fast and fluid and probably have some features that this one doesn't. Uh, but ultimately, this gives you the Pixel experience and maybe for the first time someone gets this and goes, man, I didn't know Android could be this good. I didn't know it could be kind of this cohesive and, and feel this nice to use because ultimately it does. I've been away from Pixels for about uh, 18 months at this point, like as a daily driver. And just picking this phone up and using it for a very little bit has reminded me why I love Pixel phones. I love how easily the Pixel Buds pair up to it. I love how seamless the integration is with all of Google services. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, Google's win across the board, whether it be the camera or video or just the experience of using a Pixel phone, always comes from the software. And so even though the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro will be better hardware, it will be faster, and they'll probably have some tricks, this phone is going to give you that Pixel experience, and I think that's where it's going to win and where it's going to be really attractive to consumers 
come this fall. So when will these become available? Well, right now you can go and pre-order this device uh, right at the Google Store or through Google Fi at $449. It'll launch on August the 26th, so it'll actually be available, start shipping at that point. Uh, and Google's also including uh, some cases right out of the gate with this one. So even though it only comes in one color, right out of the box, they're gonna have the availability of uh, a couple different colored cases and you know they're they're pretty standard pretty basic uh, we'll we'll open one up here um, they're a little on the chunky side but they're nice and protective too um, and again they're made by Google um, so they are going to fit the device uh, perfectly basically and you know it's it's more like a TPU sort of case adds a little bit of thickness to the overall you know uh, silhouette of the device but Ultimately, the fingerprint sensor is uh, easily accessible there. The buttons are nice and clicky on it, and it's going to provide you some drop protection uh, if you accidentally mishandle your Pixel 5a. Again, this phone will be available August 26th. You can pre-order right now over at the Google Store or on Google Fi, either one. You're going to pay $449 for this thing, and again, it will work on most carriers here in the United States. And ultimately, I think this is going to be a good fit for a lot of people. A lot of people that want that Pixel experience, that want a larger screen, that want great cameras, and all that kind of stuff. You want to add in some IP67 dust and water resistance. You want to add in a bigger battery versus what's already on the market. And you don't want to pay Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro prices. So $449 gets you a lot when you think of it that way. And I think this is going to be a good fit for a lot of people. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Go down there and hit that subscribe button. And make sure and ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.